Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Rainbow Children's Medicare Limited Earnings Conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. To remove yourself from the question queue, you may enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Shah from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aman. Welcome everyone to the earnings conference call of Rainbow Children's Medicare Limited to discuss the financial performance for the third quarter and nine months ended December 31st, 2022. We have with us Dr. Ramesh Kanchala, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. R. R. Gauri Shankar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Saurabh Bandari, Group Business Analyst. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that certain statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the Q3 FY23 results presentation, which is posted in the company's website and also available on the stock exchanges. I'd like to invite Dr. Ramesh to make his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. I extend New Year greetings to all of you, wishing you all a healthy and prosperous New Year. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings call for the third quarter and first nine months of the current financial year. Rainbow was the first stock, uh, first, uh, stock exchange listed pediatric chain in the English-speaking world. Consequently, there was no peer comparison for the analysts and investors in the listed universe. So even after we had we had to assiduously engage investors both in India and overseas and explain the various build, building blocks of the rainbow business model. It's a key differentiator and a significant market opportunity. Our efforts are bearing fruit and there is a perceptibly a better comprehension of our business model among the investor and analyst community today. Before dwelling on results, I would like to highlight the salient aspects of our operating model, given that we are recently listed company for the benefit of new listeners, I will go through one time. The Rainbow is currently country's largest pediatric hospital chain with 15 hospitals, 1550 beds across six cities. Our pediatric services under Rainbow brand includes newborn and pediatric intensive care services, pediatric multi-speciality, pediatric quaternary care, including organ transplantation. Birthright by Rainbow is an integral part of uh, Rainbow Hospital. It is a perinatal center offering normal and complex obstetric care multidisciplinary fetal care, perinatal genetics, and fertility, in addition to that, gynecological services. Rainbow Children's Hospital is built on a strong fundamentals of multidisciplinary approach with a full-time 24 by 7 consultant-led service in a child-centric environment. Children's hospitals across the world have been built on these fund core fundamentals. We follow a hub and spoke model where the hub hospital provides comprehensive multi-speciality pediatric services with an advanced tertiary and quaternary care services. While the spokes provide 24 by 7 emergency care, large outpatients as well as inpatient services, inpatient services for the wider coverage of the cities. We run the country's largest academic training program for pediatrics and pediatric super specialties in the private healthcare sector offering postgraduate training uh, in the residential DNB program as well as fellowship, fellowship programs. Comes to performance for the quarter, historically the strong momentum of the second quarter continues into the third quarter. That is high occupancy, large patient footfalls and relatively robust financial performance. We experienced a similar trend from the second quarter into the third quarter across all key operating metrics like occupancy, outpatients, inpatients, and delivery volumes across all our hospitals. The occupancy for the current quarter 
was 57.06 compared to the 51.55% in the corresponding year of the last financial year. The occupancy was lower compared to the previous quarter as a result of a significant uh, the seasonal volume witnessed in the second quarter. The RPOP for the current quarter was a stand set of 48,700 rupees, which is a growth of a 7% compared to the uh, uh, 45,600 in the corresponding quarter of the last financial year, and a growth of 4% compared to the previous uh, quarter uh, of our power of 47,000. I'm pleased to inform you that the company has delivered robust quarterly performance led by high patient footfalls across all hospitals in every geography. The, re the revenues for Q3 stood at 366.4 crores the growth of 23.17%, EBITDA of 106.7 crores, which is a uh, stance at 19.59% compared to the previous year. The PAT Q3 of FI23 is 58.2 crores, which is a, a, with a growth of 28.87 compared to the previous year. Further, we have concluded our negotiations with the insurance companies for the Hyderabad cluster and the new insurance tariff will be applicable from the next month. With this, we have renewed all our major insurance contracts across the uh, group. In terms of expansions, the Cook Hospital in OMR Road in Chennai has commenced operations in 2022 and is going as per the expectations. The new hospital in, in Hyderabad financial district is 100 beds, is a, close to completion, is going to be a operational in a few weeks' time. This is a strategically located in the rapidly growing financial district of Hyderabad with a lot of fine population. We are, we are adding another, another uh, 50 beds to a Hyderabad branch, which is, a, uh, which is a, uh, having a difficulty in accommodation, accommodating the volumes. So this is a block which is building, getting built adjacent to the Hyderabad for the demand, which is expected to come in our next six months time. So the other branch in Hyderabad city, which is in the central Hyderabad, is producing well, which is uh, expected to come in the next financial year. So we'll deepen our presence in Chennai city with another 80 beds hospital, which is uh, currently being in, uh, currently in construction phase. It's going to come into operations by next financial year. The work commenced for the 60 bed spoke in Bangalore and the 100 beds regional spoke in Rajamandri in Andhra Pradesh are expected to be completed in 18, 18 months and 24 months respectively. A little bit of clinical excellence. From the clinical side, I'm pleased to inform you that we have surpassed outpatient volumes of the last full year uh, in the current nine months and close to inpatient volumes of the last full year. As the current year being normal with the regular schools, we have witnessed a significant increase in the outpatients and inpatient volumes with a pronounced seasonal increase. And some of them are, were actually very sick requiring intensive, care, requiring intensive care services. Our doctors and paramedic staffs have been extremely busy all through the nine months, and the trend seems to be continuing. I am pleased to say that uh, our outcomes of tertiary care have been very good. The liver transplant survival of uh, uh, last nine months has been over 90%, which is very close to the Western standards. And the pediatric cardiac, surg cardiac surgical mortality is less than 2%, which is uh, uh, close to international standards, with the 50% being the complex congenital heart conditions. So the, I take this opportunity to thank all my doctor colleagues and paramedical staff who have put in and untiring efforts to deal with such large volumes, yet achieving excellent outcomes. The CDC exit. During this quarter, our long-term investor for nine years, British International Investment, PLC, formerly known as CDC Group Private uh, PLC, divested the balance equity shareholding of 14.45%, 14.45%, uh, stake in the company, which was subscribed with the Marquee long-term investors. I welcome all the new investors to the company. In conclusion, to summarize the uh, current quarter, 
the first nine months of the year largely been as per the expectations. The business has returned to back to normal, normalcy with our operating parameters demonstrating a strong growth. With that, I conclude and hope to continue our conversation in the subsequent quarter. Over to our CFO, Mr. Gauri Shankar, to present the financial numbers. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning to you all. I'm wishing you all a very happy and healthy New Year. I would like to thank you all for uh, joining, taking, taking out your time and joining in this earning update call. So I would like to share some few insights on our financial performance during the period under review. First, I will uh, go with the quarterly performance. So moving on to the quarterly performance, revenue stood at 306.4 crores, growing by 23% over the corresponding quarter of the FI22. EBITDA margin for Q3, FI23 stood at 34.84%, which is at 106.76 crores. EBITDA has grown by 20% over the corresponding quarter of last financial year. PAT for Q3, FI23 stood at 58.24 crores. PAT margin for the quarter stands at 18.5%, and PAT margin for the current quarter, current quarter Q3 grow by 29% over corresponding quarter of the last year. OP and IP volumes for the current quarter has grown by 37% and 16% over the corresponding period of FI22. We have recorded an impressive 57% occupancy during the quarter. Mature hospitals have witnessed 63% occupancy and new hospitals have witnessed 42% occupancy during Q3 of FI23. Our return on capital employed and return on equity chance at 8.23% and 5.96% for the, for the Q3 of FI22, which, is, which are not annualized. Our payer mix for the quarter chance at 49% credit and 51% is cash. And with respect to nine-month performance, so on the basis of consolidated financials for nine months FI23, we have delivered a revenue of 857 crores as against 761 crores in the corresponding period of last year. The top line has grown by 12.5% over last year, and if we exclude the COVID vaccination impact of 92 crores, which was one time, so the revenue, the normalized revenue has grown by 28% over the last year actual revenue. EBITDA margin stood at 35%, growing by 16% over, over the nine months period of FI22, and stands at 298 crores. Profit after tax for nine months, FI23, FI23 stood at 158 crores as against 126 crores for the nine months FI22. Tax margin had grown by 25% over, over the nine month, last uh, nine months FI22. OP volume grew by 47% and IP volume grew by 24% and delivery numbers have grown by 12% over the corresponding period of FI22. RPA for M, uh, nine months ended uh, FI December in FI23 has, uh, grown, has shown a growth of 7% over corresponding periods RPA, this excluding the vaccination, uh, the one-time core vaccination impact. Occupancy stood at 54% for nine months period uh, uh, in FI23, compared to 46% of the corresponding period of FI22. So during this uh, uh, nine months, we have incurred a capex of about 88 crores, and for the quarter Q3, we have incurred about 29 crores of capex. This is towards our OMR uh, financial district, Dhananagar and Marathalli projects and our regular capex. So we have utilized 60.9 crores from the IPO profits towards repayment of NCD and for project capex as stated in our prospectus. With this, I conclude my remarks. Once again, I would like to thank you all for joining this call. We can open for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Madan Gopal from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. 
Good morning, uh, Mr. Ramesh. Uh, good morning. Congrats on the good set of numbers. Uh, I had just uh, uh, one question. Uh, from an uh, occupancy point of view, uh, sequential decline in new hospitals, uh, uh, but in the same period, mature hospitals' occupancy has improved sequentially. How do we rate this? And uh, uh, from a next, uh, say, one or two years perspective, how do you see the new hospitals uh, uh, improving the occupancy levels, if you can comment on it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Madan Gopal. Generally, the, 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 the occupancy which we are talking about is a quarter-wise, right? Uh, so when we look at the quarter-wise, even in the matured hospitals, we have seen some decline, 67% um, to the 63%. Uh, in the maturing hospitals, 47 to 42. This is because uh, what we do is uh, generally second and third quarters are, are the peak seasons for the pediatric business. But however, it interchanges a little bit. What we witnessed is in the second quarter is uh, there is a the significant uh, the, uh, illness which required uh, admissions, more of a short term admissions, like okay, viral illnesses. That, you know, people coming into hospital for a day or two, that pushes up the occupancy. So that is seen in the both the uh, mature and maturing hospitals. Um, when we look at uh, moving into the kind of a third quarter, what we have seen is though there is a decline of three, an average about three to four, three point five percent, but we don't see that uh, uh, significant revenue dip as well. So that's that's quality comes into the play. So at some point, sometimes it varies, it goes, moves to the third quarter, sometimes it comes in the second quarter. It all depends on the monsoon, seasons, and various other factors. And uh, also, uh, Madan, to add to Dr. Ramesh, the OMR facility, which was there in Q2 only for a month, had a full impact in this quarter. It's a very recent facility where the occupancy tends to be lower. Hence, you see that impact uh, of occupancy on a sequential quarter being lower. So how do we see this uh, uh, new hospital's occupancy improving, uh, say, in two years? Uh, uh, sh should we look at, from a yearly perspective, them touching around 50-55% levels? Is it 55% uh, looks possible in the new hospitals? Yeah. Obviously, some new hospitals are coming up now also. I'm talking about the ones which are already operational and the categorized as new hospitals. Yeah. I think, well, we have discussed this in the past as well. So what happens is the pediatric hospitals and our business is very, very organic, uh, unlike multi-specialities where we have a government. We don't do much of government. It's more of an organic business. So it takes its own time. But at the same time, when you look at it, our uh, uh, where we break even is we break even our hospitals to 30% uh, compared to uh, multi-specialities breaking in uh, close to 40%. So therefore, I think the growth for us is kind of a pretty steady. It takes its own time to grow. The capacity building is always very, very important because that's what, what we see today in Hyderabad is that, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are having a difficulty in accommodating patients so that we are kind of expanding uh, in Hyderabad significantly. Sure. So you're saying it's, it's a steady improvement uh, from, yeah. from the current that should be expected. Uh, one more question on uh, the new facility that you have added in uh, OMR in Chennai. Uh, typically, in the uh, in first two years, uh, what sort of uh, uh, occupancy do you really target uh, compared to the overall uh, way the other hospitals are coming up? I think, you see, we, rather than targeting it, what we look at is uh, we, we, our projections have always been like, you know, how do we kind of uh, capture the market to see in terms of uh, OPD footfalls. Then it comes to the kind of uh, the other metrics like how the ICUs are filling up, how the deliveries and numbers are increasing. That's how we look at it. The, in terms of uh, occupancy per se is something it's kind of, uh, it moves to kind of uh, end of the year 30%. Is a pretty impressive for us. Um, when we see our occupancy clocking at 30 percent and end of the year, is a is a is a success story for us because we break sure. even at that we break even at that point. Okay. Uh, I would expect OMR to go that that way in uh, Chennai. Great, sir. Thank you, and wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Madan. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Ritesh Shera from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, three questions uh, to the previous participant. Uh, how much time does it take to reach the 30% occupancy once the hospital is open? That's my first question. My second question is on the insurance price hike that we received uh, at the beginning of the year. Has that slowed down to your uh, revenue number or is it yet to slow down to your revenue and margin? And my third question is, I just want to understand the count of beds that are going to get added uh, have been added in FI23 or supposed to be added in FI23 and FI24. Okay. So the first question is that now, why we typically break even at 30-31% of the occupancy, which normally we guide, we expect uh, that our uh, break even, cash break even comes about uh, 18 months in the existing cities where we are already present. So from there it goes, there keeps moving on. The second question is about insurance price hike. Price hike. So we, we now currently we have already had a price hike of uh, uh, insurance uh, Chennai, Bangalore, and Delhi of 25 percent hike that we, we yeah. had. It. And uh, currently we have uh, matured that we uh, place. We, we, we I think the, our price hike is about six uh, percent. Yeah, about around the nine to ten percent price hike what we got in Hyderabad. And that's about more than 50% of our business, right? Yeah, that's right. Only on the, in, so the, only on the inpatient business, uh, yeah. just to confirm, the outpatient business is separate. Whatever insurance tariff hike that we are talking is on the, in, on the inpatient business. So can you quantify what portion of the total business of 50% is Hyderabad and inpatient is how much percent of that? So inpatient is generally about... Uh, 70 to between 70 to 72 percent of our business and about 28 to 30 percent of our business is outpatient business so 40 percent of our so which means 40 percent of our business uh and then we, there will be a pair mix of insurance which is another let's say 40 percent so let's say one fourth of our business has been a 10 percent price hike correct you're right you're right oh. yes and that should uh, start reflecting from next quarter, right? So, so for Bangalore, Chennai and New Delhi, it was done in last year. So you have already seen that being reflected uh, in the RPOB and the revenues uh, over the period. Mm -hmm. It's the Hyderabad only that we have done now. And uh, the tariff uh, hike would be, would be there from next month onwards. So you'll see the impact coming in from uh, the, the Q4, half of Q4 and Q1 onwards. In yeah. particularly in Hyderabad market, rest is already priced in. Yeah, so we calculated Hyderabad after all calculation as one fourth, right? Uh, more than 50% business is Hyderabad in which inpatient yes. is 60, 70% in which payer mix is about 40% by insurance. So that's how we calculated, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So you are right. And sir, the bed count, uh, if you could tell us what is the bed count uh, addition uh, in FI23 and FI24, incremental beds, I want to know. Okay. So we had earlier guided, I think, about 150 beds per annum. Uh, where are we on that, I think? I think we are right on the track, actually. the uh, Currently, we have uh, uh, done 55 beds in Chennai, and there is 100 beds to be inaugurated. Uh, in the last quarter of the current financial year. The moving on to the next financial year, we have about uh, 80 beds coming in uh, Chennai city in Ananagar, and also we have uh, 60 beds coming in uh, Hyderabad, uh, the central Hyderabad, another 50 beds coming in the addition to one of our spokes in Hyderabad. The, the cumulatively together about 200 beds are going to come next year. So you mentioned 55 has already come in Chennai plus 90 at the year end plus another 50 next year, that is Chennai, right? Uh, then you mentioned Hyderabad as next year only all the beds. How many you said? The Hyderabad is going to be added. We're going to add 200 beds from now to the next uh, uh, 10 months time. So the current year, we will have about 100 beds addition. The next year, we will have about uh, the 80 plus 60, 140 beds. This is what? This is Hyderabad? Hyderabad, yeah. 80, so 80, 80 plus 140? 80 plus 50. 130 by 80. 80 plus 50. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Done, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
A reminder to our participants, please enter star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bansi Desai from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, I have two questions. So firstly, um, on the mature hospitals, we've done a good occupancy of 63%, and I'm assuming Hyderabad cluster would have done uh, better than this. So my question is, you know, how are the um, you know other hospitals, especially in the Bangalore uh, cluster, doing for us? Uh, Maratha Ali, BG Road, I uh, guess, you know, these two had a lot of scope of improvement in terms of occupancy margins. So if you can just comment on, you know, how are the trends here? What are you seeing? And, you know, what's the outlook to uh, names especially? Um, uh, Ms. Said is uh, Bangalore is doing well, and we had an occupancy of, uh, uh, we don't, we put it as a matured and maturing hospital. So in Bangalore, we had uh, one maturing hospital, one mature, two are maturing hospitals. Together, our occupancy is about uh, 40. 42% in Bangalore cluster. 42% Bangalore cluster. All put together, which was 30% in last quarter. Put together. So, so what we have seen in Bangalore is the significant outpatients uh, built up in the last one year, and also there is uh, occupancies have increased in uh, both uh, uh, primarily uh, uh, our main hub hospital as well as the Banaragata Road Hospital. So when you look at these two hospitals together, they have gone past 50% occupancy. You uh, you crossed fifty uh, percent is what you said. Yes, yeah, forty-eight point okay. eight percent. Yeah, close to. Okay, uh, that's nice to hear. And uh, so my second question is uh, on the new Delhi cluster. So here, um, I remember last time you know you'd mentioned in the previous quarter, uh, uh, Delhi was you know seeing good traction. So if you can comment on you know how it has done in this quarter, and then um, you know what are your I mean where are you in terms of your uh, expansion plans here in Delhi. You've spoken about adding 200 beds in the next two, three years. So any update on that? Yes, so Delhi is actually tracking well. This current year, there's no, uh, uh, one is uh, the our Madhukar Rainbow Children's Hospital. That's one. Other one is Rosewalk. Rosewalk is only a, you know, the boutique center. The main hospital in Delhi is doing well. It's a positive beta this time. And uh, we are clocking about 40% occupancy this year and uh, deliveries have picked up uh, uh, very well in uh, South Delhi. I think we do a largest number of deliveries in South Delhi today. Uh, even uh, intensive cases are uh, getting busier. So we see a positive traction in uh, Delhi by the rainbow. The rose walk which was kind of a loss making last year and we, it comes to the Ubita neutral today. So we have changed our model to rainbow model. Earlier it used to be kind of luxury birthing uh, center. So we changed our, the model to more like a, our, our birthright services. So ever since that, things are changing uh, uh, in a positive direction. So we hope to kind of do well in the coming year. Okay, sir. And any update on the um, expansion? Expansions, I think that the work is in progress. Probably, I think uh, I will be able to give a better update in the next quarter. Uh, in fall. Sure, sir. Thank you. I have more questions. I'll join back the queue. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Hello. Please unmute your line and proceed with the question. Uh, is it my turn? Uh, yes, Tushar Manudane from Motilal oh, Please go okay. ahead. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just on the OP side, on the existing uh, hospitals, how much is the further scope to increase the OP volumes? Because if I take the current volume, and uh, let's say number of hospitals to be 15, so it roughly comes out to be 3,000. OP volumes. So, how much is the further scope to sweat? Oh, there is a significant scope to increase further volumes because we have a, almost 40% of the uh, hospitals are new. We keep adding the new hospitals. That's where the OP volumes keep building it up. Uh, and also, the, the even the existing hospitals also continue to grow because there is a 
a lot of services are there, uh, like a specialty services, so they keep growing. So our, when you look at it, uh, the, this is the first year coming back from the pandemic. What we have seen is almost 45% growth, 47% growth. growth from the last year, or outpaced volumes. And we expect to see that significant growth year on year. As we grow number of hospitals, the OPD volumes keep growing further. And so what's been your experience in terms of any seasonality related to OP volumes? Seasonality related to? Yeah, of course. You know, seasonality plays a big role in uh, uh, the pediatric business. In the, almost the seasonality variation is almost 25% to 30% uh, uh, volumes, which we see for uh, second and third quarter volumes almost will be almost 20% uh, different from the first and fourth quarter. So that's being the season. So four quarter would be better off, right? Compared to third quarter. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Mayank Hyanki from Access AMC. Please go ahead. Mayank, your line is unmuted. I request you to please unmute yourself and proceed with the question. Yes, hi, thank you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my question is on Madhuka Trust Hospital, basically. Uh, so just like you mentioned, uh, the profitability levels in the Rose Walk, if you could highlight the profitability of Madhuka Hospital, how is it trending? And, uh, you know, on the ICD's part, is the hospital now able to service its ICD interest rates payments to the parent company? So, uh, yes. Uh, this year, I think the Madhukar Hospital has done about 10% you know, EBITDA. It is a positive and the trend is, you know, uh, it's picking up well. And uh, with respect to the serviceability of that uh, ICD, yes, that in the last quarter we got back about 2.5 crores of ICD money back from that uh, hospital. Uh, and we are not infusing any funds, so it is sustaining as well as it starts repaying the money as well. So this year, basically, we see the overall uh, outstanding amount of ICD plus interest coming off for uh, the parent. I see not in one year. Maybe it, it may take two years, but we can get it. So the coming year as well as the next year, we will do it actually. We can get back the money. No, no, I'm just saying it will start coming off. The number will start coming off right. this year itself. Yes, yes, you are right. It will come down. Yes. Got it. Secondly, uh, on the doctor consultancy charges, has there been any change in the model that uh, well, this number is uh, moving much ahead of the top line and, uh, I mean, bearing a 521 where the top line gone impacted, we have seen this ratio as a percentage of sales was also quite lower. Not quite lower, but uh, a few percentage points lower than what it is uh, uh, in this quarter per se. So is it just because of the new hospitals where the cost is uh, upfront or has there been any change in the way Either the remuneration is uh, paid out or uh, or any change in the structure completely. So generally, in a growing stage, uh, hospitals we've always been a growing stage, and uh, our uh, uh, the uh, professional charges, which is to doctors, about uh, normally we ride about 24 percent. So it varies between 23 to 24, maybe a, uh, a little over the 24 percent, depending on the number of new beds added. So when you kind of have a new hospitals, because the Rainbow always hires the doctors on full-time basis, and also on the retainer basis, definitely when you have new beds, uh, more new beds, it would uh, probably go up by a half percent or so on the consolidated level. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, uh, one more question which I had was on the attrition side. So. Uh, while the attrition for the industry is pretty large, you know, we have seen that uh, even at the time of IPO, the attrition was uh, pretty high for FI21. It was clocking at about, uh, you know, 45% or so. So how is the attrition now? And um, uh, is there any steps that you are taking to address this issue? Uh, there are two things. One is the attrition at the uh, doctor level is very minimal uh, for us. The attrition at uh, the you know staff and the nursing level and those things. So during the pandemic term, we have witnessed quite a significant number, because even pandemic has negatively played on the children's hospital. So uh, the those 
days we were actually kind of not too concerned also to kind of to lower the numbers because we were not doing a great offensive because our pandemic had no impact on children's health care so now the currently what we have uh, we have actually got back to the industry standards and uh, we have got what your version 20 22% 22% that's uh, well within the industry standards so 22% is for the non doctor staff or for the company altogether yeah. non doctors no no yeah non doctors non doctors okay okay great thank you that's all from my side thank you thank you thank you thanks Thank you. The next question is on the line of Vinayak Mota from Stallion Assets. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Am I audible? Sorry, Vinayak. Yeah. This is the handset. You know, speaker not very clear. Sure. Is this better? Much better. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, the first question I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, twofold. Uh, I just wanted to understand w- what is the potential that you see in the existing South location. uh and uh, like what is the potential number of beds or hospitals that you could have add over uh, you know the next 5 7 years uh, whatever potential you see the second question was uh, in general when you move into a new location like a delhi or you will be moving forward into new locations how long does it take to break even or you know to generate that traction there because from what i understand is being for as a children hospital every region or a sub location within that region as well has a certain hospital which people prefer going to or which they have seen their parents or you know some relatives go to so uh, people don't generally people are not generally very uh, you know uh, uh, th- they are very thoughtful about mo- going to a certain hospital that they know when it comes to a child so how do you build that transaction and how long does it take uh, to yeah Yeah, it's a uh, very good question. The reason is one is that now how 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 large we can get to. So I never imagined that we could get to this large in Hyderabad city. So we are marching towards a thousand beds uh, probably in a year down the line, in a year down the line to in Hyderabad city. So that's uh, that's the size which uh, we have almost come to closer to the multi-specialty size in Hyderabad city. so when we look at uh, going to bangalore and chennai it is adding more and more spokes and getting larger and larger what i uh, so when you typically go into the new city so this is something what we typically do is when you go into the new city we are going to we, are, we we normally we look at the building a hub hospital so what is the shortage in children self care for any city is that a multi specialty children's hospital that's what is shortage There are, there are there are many small small mom and pop stores are there everywhere so they are to cater for seasonal minor illnesses seasonal illnesses those things so we go into the city with the concept of a children's hospital which is a multi specialty where there is a children who could be treated with the for the complex conditions or critically unwell children so that is our drive that's always to be in our drive that's how we went in bangalore we went in chennai we went in delhi now we went in vijayawada so the, there is a this is a then when to kind of establish our hub hospital which typically takes any like multi specialty going into new city will definitely take 3 to 4 years time to kind of a, a get into the game then then you start building the spokes spokes in the uh, area which is the rapidly growing parts of the city and uh, to kind of a, one is to kind of achieve wider wider coverage of the city second thing is to kind of uh, by then you ban would have built more and people want to come to you because the cities are all large and the distances are also kind of a uh, travel time is much significant so therefore we try to uh, work around the spokes this is a typical model which actually we have seen is the most probably a kind of a uh, way forward for children self care is a hub and spoke model to cover uh, the wider part of the cities of indian cities so we talking about two different things one is that you know small children's hospitals women and children hospitals also five beds 10 beds they are all nothing on level or very smaller setups so rainbow looks at kind of a very different spectrum where we don't compete with those even individual pediatricians who are doing smaller perhaps most of them actually uh, uh, eventually kind of uh, becomes our network uh, smaller hospitals or network doctors to refer complexity and complexity and specialty hospitals towards our side towards the, to the towards rainbow that has happened in hyderabad that's talking in bangalore and chennai so this is what we 
expect to do uh, in a uh, whichever the city we enter in. Understood. So, so it is then to assume that you will, uh, because you are reaching that mature stage uh, stages in Hyderabad, Chennai, and uh, now uh, eventually you will in Delhi after a couple of years. So then you'll have scope to move 2,000 closer to 1,000 beds into these cities, and eventually you will move to a new city. Then, like you did in Delhi, to be uh, to build your three four year year of gestation period before which you can start expanding into the. Uh, uh, spokes and eventually towards the 1,000 potential beds that come in those cities, right? Yeah, it, it, it keeps happening parallel, the new city as well as the spokes in the existing city. Understood. And, and so what generally, what is your capex uh, per bed in general in the spokes and the hub hospital and what kind of ROICs do you see uh, that generally, you know, uh, for example, would be coming off in Hyderabad? And uh, how uh, how long does it take a, uh, a new hospital to reach to that kind of ROIC? See, that typically what happens is in, a, in a places where we are already present. For example, we are at Hyderabad, we are a super mature hospital. So if we do a hospital in Hyderabad, uh, it's uh, very unlikely to have any EBITDA negativity for the even in the end of the first year. So it will it will EBITDA break even or post some positive EBITDA. Because that's uh, that is the the brand recall and image what uh, Rainbow enjoys in Hyderabad. So places like Bangalore and Chennai now I think uh, we would do a positive beta probably in 15 to 18 months time. So there also that you know brand recall is high. People know about Rainbow model. So we are now working in Delhi that because Rainbow is kind of started doing well in Delhi that now we look at the Delhi differently. To start looking at a more of a NCR rather than Delhi alone. So, we, in terms of a, a cost per bed, it's a, we, when you go for a brownfield project, it depends on the building to building and also uh, location wise. Uh, it normally we expect it to be about 60 lakh rupees per bed. And if we do a kind of a greenfield project, I don't think will be any different from the multi-speciality because the today's standards are pretty same for whether it's children's hospital or multi-speciality hospital in, uh, to build to the standards of uh, national building code or to the, all the uh, statutory and regulatories. Understood. Understood. And one last question. So we have around one uh, 1,555 as capacity and 1,171 operational beds. Uh, where do you see this uh, uh, like gap uh, moving towards in the next three years? What kind of operational beds uh, do you you know uh, see uh, in the next two to three years? And how much does it cost you to move and move a normal capacity to an operational bed? Like, is there some incremental cost that you incur, or uh, yeah? No, basically we are we are going to add another about you know. Uh, this year we are going to add another 100 beds actually. So next year we are going to add about 200 beds. So in, in and, and the coming you know, year after that also another 200 beds will get added. So if you see, we will uh, we'll be adding about uh, 500 beds actually. So which will cost us almost about uh, 300 crores. And uh, that is and then moreover this, these these are all new beds and in, with respect to the existing one we we don't have much of capacity there is you know, always we are explaining that you no know, the capacity beds and the operational beds and whatever we have we have that you know non census beds actually so we have a lot of uh, triage beds and all there which will not be taken into account you know for our uh, occupancy count actually. So uh, there we may not be incurring much for adding the capacity. The, the, capa the capacity addition will be towards it and the capex will be towards the new facility. Understood. Understood. Great. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karthik Narayan from SCP. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you. Uh, again, uh, congratulations on a fantastic set of numbers, sir, uh, and thanks for all that you do. Uh, both my questions are follow-up questions to uh, earlier questions. I think the first one was with respect to the insurance hike. So you'd mentioned around eight, eight to ten percent in Hyderabad, which will reflect in the future, uh, in the coming quarter. What was the hike you received in the other cities, which has already been reflected in the numbers? I think that's the first question. I think of the what we had uh, because Hyderabad is uh, sequentially we've been kind of uh, uh, 
uh, are going on the hikes. Uh, so the Chennai, Bangalore, and uh, Delhi, the hikes have happened after a long time, post-COVID first time, which is why we had a fairly a decent correction to the uh, uh, 25 percent. We, 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 we got most of the uh, all the three geographies. That's already reflected uh, from the second quarter. On. Understood. Uh, Understood, sir. Hyderabad is about nine nine percent. That's uh, uh, because we kind of we got a, we enjoy fairly a premium rates in Hyderabad. Understood. And so the, my, that's helpful. And my second question, sir, again, was related to your uh, the doctor cost. I think a gentleman had asked about the, the change. Yeah. If there's a change in business model where you mentioned that it is respect, with respect to new hospitals coming on stream and, you know, versus the 24 or 25% uh, revenue growth, we have close to 40% or 38 to 40% doctor co cost increase. So is that is it fair to assume that will likely be the increase moving forward as well, given our expansion plans of 100, 150 beds every year? I think we, we, I expect it to be around 24%. If you ask me that, so this is how it is. Unless we take a completely different uh, tangent in hiring doctors differently. But as a rainbow model, we always bank on full-time doctor engagement models. So we deliver retainers significantly. We also look for the talent rather than practices of doctors. See, what happens in the children's healthcare scenario, a doctor who has got 100 patients will not transfer the business to a rainbow because he is only a primary care doctor. So we look at the doctors who are qualified, who are intensive care doctors, who have been tra trained very well from central institutes or outside the country. So obviously you need to give them a retainer for them to be comfortable to work with you for longer periods. So there's investment, investment which we made, which we make. So as a good number of expansions going on, we recruit more number of these retainer doctors. That's what pushes up. At the same time, the uh, the doctors who are uh, the uh, hospitals which have kind of been in full pledged full, full uh, capacity running hospitals, so these moderates the uh, overall doctor cost. So blended, what we look at it. If you ask me where I wanted to be, I wanted to be between 23 to 24. One, I wanted to achieve me being a doctor promoter, being a medical hospital, and our doctors have got a very different, uh, you know, responsibilities also. They got to cover the hospitals in the middle of the, in the night as well. Almost all the hospitals are manned by a senior consultant. So, com com compared to the combination of all those things, I think that's very fair. That you know, what we do to the doctors is very good, and uh, and. Uh, which is why very popular. We are very popular among doctors. So second important thing is where we are get optimization. When you look at the peer groups of others, where there is a there is some moderation. I mean advantage for us in the uh, in the consumables. The price certain differences there. We can optimize other costs. So we don't have a, so much of a marketing cost like other adults. So there are a lot of other areas which we optimize it and try to see that you know doctors are paid well and they work well also. This is understood. These are primary goals of a children's hospital. Understood. No, so thanks, thank you, thank you for that clarification and again congratulations on a on a fantastic set of numbers. Thank you, Mr. Kanti. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naman Bansali from Perpetuity Ventures LLP. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. I have just one question. And uh, what would be our pre-index margins uh, for the quarter? So pre-index margin for the quarter is to uh, see, the pre-index is uh, 91 crore. In terms of percentage, it will be about uh, 29 percent. Yeah. Okay. And during the, I think, uh, during the pre-IPO meeting, I think uh, we have mentioned about, or the post-IPO, the first con call, we have mentioned about the sustainable margins to be around 24 to 25 percent on pre-index basis. So, what is the gap we are seeing on the 29 to 25 percent, and uh, how would you uh, uh, go forward in the going forward? Uh, how would you look at it going forward uh, when new hospitals are coming in? Well, naturally, you know, we have a right to grow in the future, and uh, we would like to keep. 
if we can keep about 25% uh, uh, guidance, I think this is pretty good for me. <laughs> Achieving our goals as an organization in the longer term. Uh, I wouldn't say like be ambitious to what what I think uh, we post now today is our numbers pre end is 29, post end is 35. I probably the probably the industry is that. So uh, I can't be ambitious to continue to do while growing, uh, uh, building a children's health care for the country. So I think still I think our optimism optimism is about growth of 20 percent. That's what we have been saying. 18 to 20 percent growth year on year is something which we can expect it. Even we plan our, our expansions also, keeping that in the mind. Okay, so I was just coming from the point that uh, what, is, what would be the gap which we have seen between the 25 to 29 percent that uh, initially we had uh, a plan of sustaining around 25 percent and what has been the change which you have seen between the 400 uh, bits? I'll tell you the reason. The last two years, if you look at it, our number of beds been added is much. Most of the beds have reached the mature stage, and Hyderabad is super mature. And also the Bangalore and Chennai joined the party. Chennai perhaps joined the party bit quite early. So uh, Vijayawada broke even in the, in the second year itself. So these are all the things uh, made us kind of a uh, accelerate. Uh, uh, our profitability. Um, uh, um, Hyderabad being a super mature and not having a many many beds been added in the last one and a half year time, and uh, the Chennai and Bangalore kind of uh, there's no uh, there's no there's no hospital which is eating away money at the moment. So and this uh, which is why we are peak uh, we we are on the peak of uh, performing very well. Basically, it's the leverage, you know, the advantage of leverage, the fixed cost, you know, uh, when we add up for new beds, we will be adding, you know, additional fixed cost we will be incurring. So, since our expansion is less in the last two years, so we are enjoying the leverage actually. So, that's where that margin has gone to 29% and we are uh, saying that we are going to add 1000 beds in the next five years actually. So, considering that, we said we will do optimistically that 25%. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arpit Shah from Stanley Nasser. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please go to the yeah. question. Yeah, please. Yeah, just wanted to understand uh, the peak occupancy uh, a mature hospital can have. Right now, we are at around 63% occupancy levels for our mature hospitals. That is my uh, first question. My second question, I just wanted to, uh, if you can just identify which are the hub hospitals and which are the spokes hospital in your uh, portfolio. And even the previous participant had asked that we are, our operational capacity is around 1171 beds and a total capacity is 1555 beds. So typically, what would be the uh, ratio from operational to total capacity? Typically, what, what it should look like. And my fourth question would be around the reinvestment side. So we are broadly going to be generating about 250 to 300 crores of cash flow from operations almost every year for the next three years or so. And we're going to be spending about 300 to 400 crores on CAPEX. So what would be the rest of the uh, capital would be doing on your balance sheet? Would it be, uh, would it be uh, dividend payouts or would you be looking to buy, uh, like go for some greenfield expansion, let's say Noida or Kurgao? So anything on that as you can highlight? Yeah. I think one is uh, our occupancy levels, and I think we have reached uh, 70, 70 plus occupancies also in Hyderabad city. And uh, uh, what we are talking about is blended uh, occupancies uh, at a consolidated level. So when you look at uh, the Hyderabad and Vijayawada, they have reached to the 70, 70 plus percent occupancies. But uh, it's very difficult to achieve occupancies of 80, 80 plus occupancy because of a differential area for pets. For example, we have 18% of the beds in newborn intensive care. Newborn intensive care is all incubated, so we can't keep any other patient there. And also some isolation wards and uh, some pediatric intensive care. So therefore, the very differential, the, the differential areas are there within the hospitals, so, which is why whatever we see in Hyderabad is that probably the PK, uh, which can happen to anywhere in the world, in the children's hospital. 
So in terms of operational bets to other trials bets and various things, usually if you can achieve it to the 80-20, 80-20 is very good. So I think that's where we are in some range. Uh, in moving forward in future, and we were trying to work on that, how can we reduce that to a 15%? So this is the exercise which we are in, which are in, in the progress now to uh, especially existing hospitals. We are working on that. How to make them at least partially revenue generating beds, like a daycare beds and those things. So uh, this is the this exercise on, on cards now. So next is that uh, in terms of CapEx. Yeah. So we, yeah, we, the success actually, see, we have currently also, we have about a 500 plus source of cash balance, including the IPO proceeds. So what uh, we have a uh, thousand beds, you know, expansion plan actually. So in that five, so that that will about you know uh, 600 to 700 crores we have to invest on that. And uh, the balance money, any anything is there? Definitely, you know, we the directors will consider, you know, based on the the situation, they can consider dividend actually. And we the other than that, we have you know we are uh, we will be consistently looking for a good opportunity for acquisition as well actually. So right now it's not on the card. We will be looking for it actually. Got it. Can you just identify which are the hub hospitals and spoke hospitals in your network? Oh, yeah, this Hyderabad is a uh, Hyderabad Panjara Hills is a hub. In Bangalore, there is a in a, uh, Outer Ring Road near close to Maratal is a hub. Chennai is a hub, and uh, Delhi Malvinagar is a hub. And uh, Vijayawada size is fairly big, about 135 beds. Vishakhapatnam, we have built a capacity of uh, almost like 175. We operate only 110 beds at the moment. That could go up also because those are all regional folks. What we plan, I mean, with our experience of the past, when we look at the regions, when we go into the cities like two tight cities like a place like Coimbatore, Vijayawada, and Vaisak, these are cities definitely require about 125 to 150 beds because they, they won't be a spoke model. There will be a one hub model. So places like in Hyderabad now where we are, probably we require one more hub in the future. That's what we, we initially, our thought process is. And uh, Delhi, what we are kind of, uh, we are doing, uh, uh, we've been uh, in discussions and doing diligence to probably do a, a large hub in Delhi. That's uh, probably our next financial results. I will try to kind of uh, cover those aspects of it. So, so do you see the top eight cities as uh, as potential uh, for hubs? That is what you see for the next decade, because we've already been in Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, now Delhi. But do you see Bombay, uh, maybe in Gujarat, maybe in in the east also? Where is potential for creating new hubs in the next decade? Yeah, absolutely. Because the, I mean, I mean, we have only one operator now uh, at the moment. We can only do what, I mean, we can't just, the problem with the children's health care is that now, it's a very, very organic, it's a very, very demanding because you, de you deal with the digital native population and most of the sickness is the critically ill, unpredictable, uh, these ones. So a lot of emotional, a lot of uh, uh, these things. So, so you need to have a very, very robust uh, operating model as well as a very strong doctor model. It's not something doctors coming and going out is not acceptable. You need to have a full-time doctor engagement model. So when you look at the, you know, the developing developed world, there is a, but the US, there are about 250 children's hospitals are there. Still, they feel the shortage. The country like us, which is prospering in every possible way, I mean, every of our cities, almost whichever is got a 40, 50 lakh population, definitely requires about 200 bed hospital to cater for the uh, serious ailments and the critical care and uh, specialties. No, it is huge, but it takes time to build it. So the kind of competition we'll be facing in some of these cities will be very high, right? Like something in Bangalore where you have a couple of chains operating. Let's say even in Bombay, you'll be having a couple of chains operating. Even in Delhi, you'll be seeing a good amount of competition. So how would you be fighting on those competition? So honestly, competition, you know, competition or competition is very minuscule. The competition is there only from small segments where they're birthing and those things. Our drive is the children's health care, not birthing. Birthing is, comes along with us because we believe that the best place to have a child birth is children's hospital because anyone is anticipating a high-risk pregnancy, they should deliver in children's hospital. This is our slogan. This is how we go about it. 
we are not a mom and pop stores or we are not a small children's i know i'm not against i work i would like a small children's hospitals uh street children's hospitals to be there because to cater for the close by needs but what we are expecting to do in the country is to to kind of a, to 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 cover uh, the city for the sickness or critically ill children or complex problem or specialty problems these are the things which uh, yeah, when you say children's hospital that is a where it cut across it doesn't cut across with the kind of a, the smaller you know the uh, centers which are five beds 10 beds 15 beds so that's why i see that there is no i mean one of the things is still i still feel believe that we are a, we are a pilot project in the country and uh, still i mean um, there's a lot more to explore and do it got it so would you be looking to explore higher growth rates because the kind of opportunity which presents you and you're probably one of the only players doing what you're doing right now so would you be targeting let's say more than 18 to 20% kind of growth rate because that kind of opportunity is present for you and you've already set the model how you want to operate in terms of margins in terms of execution so would you be looking at higher growth rates so certainly that you know so the, whatever the we have been going i think pretty impressive in healthcare segment so far but at the same time what's more important is that you know we need to be disciplined on what we are offering to people and what uh, uh, the breadth and depth we are building it and i see indian healthcare is not only for indian healthcare it is for the pan india and also for the indian neighborhood is again kind of a, uh, is a huge opportunity where people can come in like a like a multi specialty is doing a lot of international business similarly that you know probably in the years to come that we will be looking at a huge opportunity coming uh, international business coming into the pediatric segment in this country got it got it thank you so much best of luck thank you thanks sir thank you thank you the next question is on the line of anish deora from nomura please go ahead yeah thanks uh, just one question from my end i just wanted to know what is the frequency of the price hikes that we take on insurance contracts like the 8 to 10% that we took now again when would the revision happen well uh, ideally it is a uh, two year cycle so um, yeah, it, it, ideally it is two year cycle but it, uh, it keeps going a little kind of a two and a half to three years sometimes so so insurance have got their own way of <laughs> delaying things understood and on the normal cash patients right uh, what are the average price hikes annually that we see depending on the you know uh, city and depending on the what offering we doing and also the uh, the positioning of the suppose it is in the same city and we have a differential prices because we have a market which is kind of a high paying we have a market which is a little moderately play the pay it depends on the payer mix which we look at it so i mean definitely there is yearly year on year we definitely we need to kind of look at the inflation correction that that's that definitely we do it and the secondly what we look at it we do the price benchmarking once in two years time to see the what is the opportunity based on that we work on it okay all right thanks thank you next The next question is in the line of Mayan Kanki from Access AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, sorry. I had a clarification on the uh, Madhukar Hospital again. So, the 10% margin which you mentioned is post India's margin, or this is after accommodating the rent out payments. That's one. And did you say that the occupancy there we are running currently is about 40%? Yeah. Yeah, we are doing about 40% occupancy. That society will not have India's adjustment actually. So. it's a 10% oh. margin in the pre-index only okay pre-index only okay got it so on on the hospital itself you know the occupancy is still running lower to what uh, you know our group level occupancy is and the run rate is still low uh, versus other hospitals that that have that kind of you know uh, age profile so and it's been uh, we are now in a post covid scenario I, i think we were also talking about at some point of time you know there we had a doctors issue over there in terms of uh, uh, we did not have a full surge team of doctors at some point of time so from this perspective uh, you know do we now have a full offering of you know full range of uh, care across all the departments that's one and secondly 
Um, any specific issue which is uh, uh, which is resulting in lower occupancy of the uh, hospital versus the uh, other hospitals? And, uh, doctor, sir, now the full the full set of doctors are there actually. So the business is it's picking up. Uh, as post COVID, we have seen a lot of change, and uh, definitely that uh, now the center is doing well. Uh, in the next one. I think we need to add more specialties to uh, Delhi now. See, the thing is, we have seen, this is a, uh, let, let me give you a little brief about it. It's a, of all the hospitals, uh, this is one which is a, a low capex model and very high rental model. So what I've invested is about uh, uh, 40 crores, 40 crores for 140 beds. So that's a low capex when you look at it. Second uh, important thing is that you now it has a um, it is in the it is in the south south of uh, uh, South Delhi, and it is not in the kind of uh, what I realize now is that it's not in the most uh, the children rich areas. It's a, a population is more of aged populations. Still, we kind of uh, when we look at the doctor engagement there, um, Rainbow has certain definitely a different way of doctor engagement model, which we had a initially difficulties because most of the doctors don't, doesn't believe in full-time engagement doctors. So over a period of time, we've done to a hybrid, uh, we've done to the more towards our model now. So now we'll, when you look at it, our numbers, we, we had a huge impact of COVID because the Delhi government made, because this is a trust hospital, so government has a say. So the government has made this as a children's COVID hospital for one and a half year time. So that means we kind of in for the four year, four and a half years, so one and a half year is gone out of the out of the block. So we have come back now, and from the losses we have come back to the recovery phase. Our occupancy is that the blended comes to the across the year about 40 percent in a in a busy percent and this one. Second important thing is that uh, the uh, the the number of specialties what we have is a mainly where focus is the intensive care services, obstetrics and gynecology, and pediatric surgery, and a couple of specialties. As we move forward, we need to increase the number of specialties in Delhi. That's the plan which need to be executed. But having said that, specialties don't grow like, like a multi-specialty, adult specialties. It, is a, it takes time to grow. So Delhi story will definitely will take its own time to grow. But what I am, my optimism is that, you know, yeah, we are in the right part of the city is an important area to be in. Second important thing is we are tracking a good name now. That's most important for me in Delhi. Thirdly is that now it's a Ibiza positive now and it's going to pay back its money. And uh, I've not bled in a lot of money in this uh, overall, this, uh, you know, it's running the Delhi hospital. It's given me entry door. Now I know Delhi. I think of when I look at my business plan for the Delhi, I'm absolutely bang on now. I know what is exactly Delhi, how do I operate myself. Probably I think in a next uh, coming earning cost, I'll present my, my business plan for Delhi. So I just, I just kind of uh, request all of you to wait for some time. Got it, got it. We, we look forward to uh, your Delhi plans being unfolded. Uh, just, just, but you know, just from business and financial perspective, even as we you know await addition of more specialty in this hospital, the performance of this hospital from uh, you know in terms of RPOBs or occupancy or profitability in the meantime, till you announce your plan, should keep on improving from here on, despite whatever challenges you mentioned around the hospital and, yeah. and the area, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for uh, everyone to be uh, very patient to listen to us. Thank you very much. Once again, uh, we'll meet you in the, uh, the next earning call uh, of the last quarter. So I wish you have a, a great day and a great year ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, and should you have any question, please uh, write it to us uh, at investors uh, at rainbowhospital.in. We would be happy to engage further with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Rainbow Children's Medical Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.